Well, welcome to Front Porch Friday. We are in our series, Why Did I Say That? And this is my sweet friend, Mindy, who's been teaching this series with me on the porch. And she has just written a Bible study on Peter. And on this uh, series that we're doing on Front Porch Friday, we're talking about Peter and some of the things that he said that he thought probably later on, why did I say that? These five things that we should never say to God. This is a great Bible study. I've got a link below it uh, that you can uh, use to find this study for yourself or maybe for your group, for your church, for your home Bible study. Mindy, thanks so much for joining me for this series. Oh, I have, thanks for having me. I love this series. I love this series. Even though it's very, very convicting, I am very much enjoying it. And uh, today we're on session five, the fifth thing that Peter said, mm -hmm. the things that we still continue to say in so many different subtle ways. And what was the fifth thing that we see that Peter said and he wished he hadn't said it? Well, this is the, these are the words that Peter is most known for. Mm -hmm. He followed Jesus when Jesus was arrested. He followed at a distance and followed him into the courtyard. And um, after a little while, those standing near said to Peter, uh, surely you are one of them for you are a Galilean. He began to call curses down on himself and he swore to them. And these are the words, I don't know this man you're talking about. And um, our focus is what to do when fear of man undermines our commitment to Christ. You know, here Peter is, he's, uh, he had declared greater loyalty to Jesus than any of the other disciples. He had vowed to die with Jesus if needed. And then here he is, and he's confronted, and he denies Jesus, not only once, yeah. but three times. Three times. Three I don't times. know this man. I don't know this man. Yeah. I don't know this man. Um, and, you know, as Christian women uh, in a culture where it is just not popular and certainly not socially acceptable to be um, a believer in mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. we often um, find ourselves where we're concerned about what people are thinking or about the environment we're in and, and how do I share my faith? What is appropriate? How do, how do I do this? Um, how do I keep from denying Christ? Um, how do I evangelize? How do I share my faith in a meaningful way uh, with the people around me? And, um, you know, in, in social situations or uh, in the workplace, it can be a very difficult, mm -hmm. very intimidating, and mm -hmm. make you very, very fearful yeah. of, of uh, becoming the religious girl in the yeah. office. The Jesus becoming, freak. Yeah, the, for the Jesus <laughs> freak, whatever it is, or that it may even cost you your job. Yeah. Uh, that it may be that unpopular. Uh, mm -hmm. And like you said, in social situations, you're a member of a certain social set or a club or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, there are opportunities there to share, but you have this, uh, there's a little intimidation about whether you should do that or not. And, um, what we see here is that sometimes fear can cause us to do exactly yeah. what fear caused Peter to do, and that is just to either outright deny, mm -hmm. or more subtly, what we do is, we don't say it, do we? But in our hearts, we just stay quiet. Mm -hmm. We're silent, and we don't speak out, and we don't say that uh, we belong to Christ, that uh, we don't share our faith with others, because silence is just um, our way. A lot of times it makes us feel more comfortable, but it is just um, as, as bad as what Peter did verbally by saying, I don't know him. We say we don't know him sometimes just by our uh, our silence. Yeah. And that is convicting. That is very it convicting. Is. You know, and there's so many different um, scenarios, and we have to be careful because, you know, I think of, um, and we were talking about this before we uh, came out here, mm -hmm. that, you know, what about the, the woman whose husband is not a believer? It's appropriate to be silent. Yes. Um, I'll just read, and these are Peter's words. In 1 Peter 3, 1, it says, Wives, in the same way be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Um, and so, you know, I think sometimes that's really hard as a, as a wife when we so love our husband and you know thankfully my husband is a believer and and um but i, I know many women who are married and their husband does not attend church with them they're they're not a believer and uh it's so hard for them not to 
to nag and not to mm -hmm. to push and they want so much for their husband to share the same yeah. faith and to to love Jesus like they do mm -hmm. and to believe and yeah. it's a frightening thing it uh, is for them and so in your zeal and in your love sometimes you uh, really do overstep what the, the instructions here uh, from first Peter are and that is to win him without a word yeah. without by your words. behavior yeah and that's hard that's hard for us women to do anything without words oh. is tough for us <laughs> so, so um, it's a it's a high calling but I think the the underlying um, point is that we are to love uh, you know Christians are known for what we don't um, agree with but how about what we love who we love how we love mm -hmm. and I think if we love our husband where he is mm -hmm. um, he is going to be impacted much more yeah. by I've seen it over mm -hmm. and over again haven't you yeah. it may take a while it may take years and years yeah but I have seen so many husbands who have been won mm -hmm. by a godly woman who just lived the love of Jesus the grace of Jesus in front of that husband yeah. until finally he just he just had to have it himself he just yeah. had to know what that love really was and even in the workplace um, you know, we have to, there's so many rules and there's so much that's not okay, but the way we live our lives and the way we behave and the way we love, if we can just, I mean, our prayer before we walk in the doors of the office, you know, needs to be, Lord, help me to love like you love. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as an ambassador for you in this place, show me how to love this person show me how to shine your light mm -hmm. in this place and um, you know we were talking about um, 1st Peter 315 um, you know always being ready to share mm -hmm. when God does provide that opportunity and there are opportunities aren't yes. there so are there you are. ready are you ready to share yeah and 1st uh, Peter 315 says but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord always always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have when we are a light and when mm -hmm. we love in a way that is not normal mm -hmm. people want to know yeah. why yeah. why are you able to put a smile how on your do face? you do that yes yeah. and it's like, but to but do this with gentleness and respect we're not supposed to be a bull in a china no, or a judgmental little yes. you know, just with with bible bashing people and all this but we are to stand and we are to share when God gives us an opportunity. He says, you be ready to do it. And you do it with gentleness. And you do it with reverence. And uh, not with the spirit of judgmentalism. Um, you know, I think about Peter. And uh, when they, after the resurrection, and as he is sharing, and you know, he's the lame man who's been healed. And he's uh, called into by the, by the Sadducees. And they tell him, you stop preaching. You mm. stop doing all this. Yeah. And uh, he said there, he, he had learned his lesson, hadn't he, from those <laughs> denials. And he said, you know, yeah. you can tell us to do just about anything, but we will always speak about Jesus. And that is in Acts chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. And he's just very bold there. He says, you know, you can arrest us, and you can beat us, and you can uh, charge us not to share. But we will share the name of Jesus Christ with others. And that's got to be our, we've got to have that boldness yes. as well. But you need to have real sensitivity to the Holy Spirit about when to just remain silent and let your light shine okay and so uh, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is absolutely critical uh, and but, but fear fear is never gonna be good it's never right. gonna be your friend and uh, perfect love casts out fear is oh, what it says in that. first John yes. and uh, fear of sharing your faith girl you got to get over that okay and when God opens the door that you're ready like it says there in first Peter to give every man every man an answer for the hope that lies within you with gentleness and with reverence. Mindy, I love this lesson. It's very, very convicting. And I just want to ask you all, uh, are you ready? Are you sharing your faith? Or has fear kept you, uh, just like it did Peter, from uh, sharing your faith and the fact that you are a follower of Jesus yeah. Christ. How are you seeing Christ use you? And if you've got an unbelieving husband or uh, uh, someone at your work, we would love to to, to pray for them as yes, well. Absolutely. And uh, so just let us know. We love hearing your comments and things like that. And how's the Lord speaking to you today as you've been challenged? And uh, through this um, this fifth thing that, Jesus, that, uh, that Peter said that he, we, we should never say, and that is that I don't know this man that you're talking about. 
you know, how have you, and I know I have as well, you know, not taken every opportunity I, that I should. How do we so subtly sometimes deny Jesus Christ in our daily lives as we uh, just go to work, as we just uh, go to the, to the softball field with our daughters, as we go to the baseball field with our, our kids and soccer and all this, and you've got moms and things around you. Are you just so uh, wanting to fit in that you don't share the love of Jesus Christ with others? That's fear. That's fear that shouldn't rule you. Thanks so much, Mindy. This has been an awesome, awesome series. And we're going to follow it up it. with one more video next week here on the front porch about where do you go when you've said all five mm -hmm. of those things. Okay, what do you do? Because this, just like Peter, you and I, even Mindy and I, we mm -hmm. have, haven't we? We've all said all of these five <laughs> things and wished, oh, why did I say that? <laughs> girls, it's awesome to sit here on the porch with you. We'll see you right here next week on Front Porch Friday. Bye, girls.